Now I'm afraid tonight, Shaitan might cause me to forget the hadith. Let me tell you in advance, so if I forget it, you remind me. Eh? <laughs> Something about Nabua, prophethood, comprised of 46 different parts. Hmm? Whenever I come to the subject of the true dream, if I forget, remind me, because Shaitan is working hard to cause me to forget. Now then, you won't forget. <laughs> what is this Bushra? Because this is the heart. They are people who have faith. They have care of Allah. Allah responds. They have no cause to protect. He protects them. They have no grief. He removes it from their heart. You hit them hard. They were in great pain. Allah took away the pain. Allah took away the pain. But most important of all, that make them the, the friends of Allah is this. You can recognize them. That they get bushra from Allah. What is that bushra? Which when it comes, it is this which completes the karma to be, the establishment of the what is that Bushra? <laughs> Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu islam, he is the one who explained, <laughs> o, o Messenger of Allah, what is this Mubashira? And he replied, Ru'ya <laughs> sadiqa and Ru'ya Sadiqa. Ru'ya, a Ru'ya is knowledge which comes to you directly from Allah. It doesn't come to you through the medium of the rational faculty. No. It doesn't come to you through book knowledge and university degrees. It doesn't come to you through observation and experimentation. It is knowledge and information which comes to you directly from Allah. It can come to you while you are asleep, it can come to you while you are awake. When it comes to you when you are asleep, it comes to you in a dream. So you can have a dream, you can have a dream, and in your dream a rukia comes. Huh? And you can be awake, and while awake, a rukia comes. A rukia would be something communicated directly by Allah to you. In the English language they like to use the word vision. A vision is not something that you see with these eyes. You don't call that a vision. I went and I had a cup of tea with the Imam. Seeing the Imam was not a vision. We don't use the word vision for that. Ah, when I see something but do see it with these eyes, I see it with this eye, the internal eye, the heart. That is called a vision. That is Rukhya. <laughs> and that sometimes comes in a dream. The dream itself in its totality is not a rukia. But part of the dream can be a rukia. And so this verse of the Quran of Surah Yunus is conveying a message of supreme importance because it says Zalika Deenul Qayyim and Dota everyone says Zalika Deenul Qayyim these are not the right words, these are very heavy words. These are 
strong man to hold up these words. That is the establishment of the deed. All that came before was building and there was one last block left. And when this block or this brick is put in place, now the deed is Hayyim. Namely, knowledge that comes directly from Allah without passing through the medium of the rational faculty or sensory observation or experimentation, etc. Nabi Muhammad wrote <coughs> about dreams. And you warned us that some dreams come from Shaitan. Hmm? And uh, these are usually dreams that scare you, like nightmares. And sometimes these dreams can be cleverly constructed. Allah gave you a nice wife, Alhamdulillah. She's a virtuous woman, Alhamdulillah. The world is filled with treasures. But the most valuable thing in the whole world is a virtuous woman. And that's what you got. Yeah. And then you had a dream yeah. of your wife, you know what? And you woke up in the morning and you looked at the door. You know what I saw? You know what I saw? I know you buy locks put on every door of the house. The windows have locks as well because of what you saw in the dream. The Prophet said, when any of you see the dream from Shaitan, when you wake up from the dream, he said, turn your head to your left shoulder. Most of us have left shoulder, don't we? <laughs> and then spit, three times, the spitting being a symbolic act of expelling something filthy evil. Spit three times. Saliva does not necessarily have to be the man. But after doing that, he says, don't tell that dream to anyone. Not even to grandma. Not even to grandma. Yeah. Don't tell that dream to anyone. And if you do that, the dream will fade away. It won't harm you. What if no one ever told you the subject? No one ever taught the subject of dreams? Hmm? And you never knew about it. And you woke up in the morning and you told them, you know what I saw last night? Then the dream will take roots. And then next week, you will see her again, but this time, Tova, 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 And when you wake up from your sleep, you will be going mad now. You're hitting the wall. And six months later, the divorce takes place. And Shaitan rubbed his hand, and his mission accomplished. <laughs> dreams from Shaitan. Hmm? Sometimes the dream is because Shaitan just wants to laugh his head off. Huh? So you see yourself in a dream and there are a number of boys there with you and they're playing football with your head. Huh? My head? And they're playing football with it? Now that is a, that's a nightmare. You wake up, you'll be wet. Hmm? Shaitan is just having fun at your expense, causing you pain and anguish and so on. These are dreams from Shaitan. Don't tell these dreams to anyone. You wake up, turn your head to the left side, spit three times. If you want to continue sleeping and you are sleeping on your right side, sleep on your left side now. Said the Prophet, not Imran who said. And then there are dreams 
with cats of our own nafs and these are like windows to the heart so you can see yourself sometime in the heart there is pain and suffering you married her when she was just 15 and you had such fun with her growing up and you lived with her for 60, 70 years and then she died and you feel so lonely now your heart is broken you don't have an appetite to eat anymore you don't even want to go outside walk in the sunshine a little bit if you stay like that you will die you need to come to life again so in the night time while you were sleeping she came to you and she sat down on the bed and she held your hand and she talked to you all through the night and in the morning when you woke up you happy to have come back you eat him, what's wrong with grandpa, look he's eating, he's walking he's out in the sunshine, he's in the garden, what happened grandpa? Granny came that night <laughs> Granny came that night this is the dream that has come to fulfill, to fill the longings of the heart the heart is longing for something so Allah allows the heart to feel itself <laughs> But those dreams which come from the heart can also tell you things about your heart that are not good, that are bad. Hmm? So you know something about yourself, <coughs> very privately. So you can work on it to try to correct it. Nobody else knows not him, I doesn't know. You're the only one who knows, I can't even dream. So those dreams which come to you from your own nuts are also very important. Western psychologists have done a lot of work in this. Sigmund Freud, Adler, Jung, these men have done a lot of work on the psychology of dreams. But then we come to the most important part of our subject, namely, dreams which come from Allah. What is the status of dreams which come from Allah? And what is the status of vision that come not in sleep but also in waking, in the waking state? Because they're the same. It's the same vision whether it comes in sleep or whether it comes while you wake. What is its status? The true vision. Ruhiya Sadhika. He was writing that book many years ago. But for some strange reasons, more women buy that book than men. <laughs> <laughs> and for some strange reason, I get much more emails from women to their dreams than from men. I don't know whether women have more dreams than men. Men too busy to dream. <laughs> Whatever it is. The Prophet said on his last postman, the Khatri Sahih Bukhari. It is a very important occasion. But we seldom ever pay adequate attention to it. Can you, can you imagine what he said? He said that Nabuwa or prophethood is comprised of 46 different parts. Don't ask me what are the 46 parts because he didn't say it. He said Nabuwa or Prophethood is comprised of 46 different parts. After me, nothing remains of Nabuwa except one part. Oh, there is a part of Nabuwa still remaining in the world in Pelican Park. Is it Pelican Park? Pelican Park. What is it? He said it is that Bushra. <coughs> that Bushra that is still in the world. That Rukhya Sadiha. Rukhya Sadiha. The vision 
which comes in a dream, or the vision which comes while you are awake, which, through which knowledge and information is communicated directly from Allah. <coughs> that is the last part of prophethood still remaining in the world. That means a lot, doesn't it? And therefore it deserves serious study, doesn't it? Not to be dismissed lightly. And when a servant of Allah is blessed with that busha, then he is a friend of Allah. SubhanAllah. And you attack him and you humiliate him and you persecute, persecute him and you wage war on him, what will Allah do to you for waging war on his friends? No. <coughs> when you have a rukia and you are asleep, <coughs> when you wake up from your sleep, he said, Allah Ta'ala, Wasallam. Number one, perform two rakat salat nahu. To thank Allah. Number two, give some charity. To thank Allah. Don't go telling your dreams to everybody. No. You should only communicate your dreams to those who love you, who dare to you. For someone who is learned and blessed by Allah with knowledge of the interpretation of dreams. Good. So there you are, the three kinds of dreams. Other dreams in the Quran? True dreams? Yes, they are. Let's take a look at them. The most famous surah of the Quran for dreams is which one? Ah, Yusuf alayhi salam, the surah of dreams. <coughs> Was it the sun, the moon, and how many stars? Huh? Eleven. Eleven? The sun, the moon, and eleven stars? They came and they bowed down, they made sitch down before Yusuf alayhi salam. <laughs> About forty years later, Yusuf alayhi salam declares to his father, O oh father, this is the fulfillment of the dream that I had. It was a true dream to be a sardina. Today it has come to pass. After 40 years, did the sun come and bow down before it? Did the moon come and bow down? Did 11 stars come and bow down? No, they did not. No, they did not. Well then, what happened? His father and his mother and eleven brothers came and bowed before him. Oh! So knowledge was communicated directly by Allah, from Allah, directly to Yusuf alayhi salam. Not through the medium of the rational faculty, not through book knowledge, not through university, and that knowledge <coughs> was communicated to him in Mutashabihat. <laughs> coded, coded language. Mutashabihat. In religious symbolism. And if you are to make the mistake to, to, to understand it literally, then you'll be wrong. You'll be wrong. It had to be interpreted. 
and this this sun symbolizes the father, the man, the moon, the mother, and the eleven stars, eleven brothers. Okay? You had enough? Or shall we go on? Okay. The prisoner saw himself pouring wine. And the other one saw himself with a basket of bread and the birds were eating from the bread. If you understood this literally, then you have to wait for the basket with the bread in the basket and for the birds to be. If this is your methodology, if you insist that this is the only valid and acceptable methodology, you're going to have to wait for the basket and for the bread and for the birds eating from the bread. But no! Knowledge was communicated in these two rukhiya in the form of symbolism, religious symbolism. And it had to be interpreted. And Yusuf Islam correctly interpreted it that the first one, you could be free. They were very easy. You will return to your job in the king's palace serving the king. And you, you're going to be executed. And when you are executed, your body will be thrown out there and the birds will be eating from your body, your head. And so here is another example. The knowledge was communicated. It was true. But it was communicated through Mutashabihat. With this symbol. You had enough? The king. Seven ears of corn, full, the grain of death. Seven ears of corn, dry, no corn in them. Seven fat cows, seven thin cows and seven fat cows. Hmm? Nobody could interpret it. At least there wasn't anyone <laughs> in Egypt who was going out the side of the window looking for seven fat cows. No. At least they had that much knowledge to understand. But when knowledge comes directly from Allah, in the form of vision, they have to be interpreted. They have to be understood literally. Hmm? At least they have that much knowledge. And Yusuf Al-Islam interpreted it. That there will be seven years of abundant rain and plenty harvest and there will be seven years of drought. Then Muhammad al-Islam was done. And he saw himself making tawa around the Kaaba. It was a vision of something to happen. And the vision was true. Because after that came Hudaybiya, and then after that came Tatsamakka, and we were there, and we were making the walk around the Kaaba at full week. But this dream came without any symbolism in it. Who did that? Did that thing? And so knowledge can come directly from Allah. And it can come either in the form of symbolism or it can come plain and safe. Exactly what it says. <laughs> These are some of the dreams in the Quran. How important is this subject? Another hadith of Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet said, Alayhi wa sallam, when the last age comes, the dreams of the Muslim 
will hardly ever fail to be true to We are living in the last age. Now, do you think that the British army defeating the Turkish army, the Ottoman Islamic Empire army in 1917 and liberating the Holy Land and Lord Kitchener entering Jerusalem and declaring today the crusades are over. Did this just happen by chance? Did it? And then Britain ruling over the Holy Land from 1918 to 1948. This was by chance. It could have been France, it could have been Germany, it could have been China. But by chance, is it? And then the Jews being brought back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own 2,000 years after Allah had expelled it. <laughs> by chance. Is this by chance? And then a state of Israel being born in the Holy Land in 1948. Is this by chance? All of these things. And then that Israel <laughs> that Israel being protected with American vetoes in the Security Council, one after the other, veto, 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 <laughs> so that Israel can grow in power stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger to become a nuclear power and a thermonuclear power is this by chance? Hmm? And that Israel is becoming so strong and so powerful now that it is about to take over from the United States as the ruling state of the world is this by chance. If all of these things can happen by chance, well then a cow can also jump over the moon. Well, if it is not happening by chance, so I want to know. What is the explanation? Because it doesn't seem to me as if things are happening by chance. What is the explanation? Hmm? The explanation is that you are living in the last days. That is the explanation. The explanation is that you are living in the age in which the Alamat is dark. The signs of the last day are unfolding in the world. And when the signs of the last day are unfolding in the world, you need to study that subject of the signs of the last day. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back home and tell your wife, you know, the cow jumped over the moon tonight. <laughs> she will laugh at you. When you study the signs of the last day, you remember the companions were sitting talking amongst themselves. The Prophet came and asked, what are you talking about? And they said, we're talking about the signs of the last day. And he said, the last day would not come until, and he mentioned ten signs, and if you don't mind very rapidly, ten, these are the ten major signs. Number one, and they are not given in the chronological sequence in which they will occur, no. Number one, Dajjal. Dajjal. Number two, Gog and Magog. Yeah, Jews and Magog. Number one, Dajjal. Number two, Gog and Magog. Yes, Jews and Matt Jews. Number three, the return of the son of Mary, the true Messiah. Number four, Dukhan, smoke. Number five, the battle up. The beast or the creature of the up, the earth, the land, the territory. Number six, that the sun will rise from the west. Number seven, eight, and nine, three, Husu, 
plural of khas. The earth, an earthquake accompanied with the earth sinking down. And when it sinks down, it swallows what it swallows. Incidentally, this is not Imran who is saying these things, huh? This is the Prophet Because some people get their idea. It's coming from me, I don't know. Strange. Three khusuf. Plural of khas. An earthquake in which the earth sinks down and swallows what it swallows. One in the east, one in the west, and one in Arabia. And that one in Arabia, we know, would come at the time of the advent of Imam al-Mahdi. So when it occurs, no one can doubt this is Imam al-Mahdi. Not the two eclipses, this one. And number ten, that a fire would come out of Yemen, and that fire would drive people to the place of assembly, which is Arafat. So that, and yeah, let's wait for that. These are the ten major signs of the last day. This is knowledge which is communicated to the Prophet directly from Allah. He didn't learn this from any school, he didn't read it in any book. Allah gave it to him directly. And so knowledge comes from Allah directly. And the signs of the last day would be knowledge which comes directly from Allah. And among these signs, the Quran tells us that one in particular is the key to the understanding of the whole subject. Which one? Surah Al-Zukhruf. Wa innahu la ilmul lita'a. Yani, he, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, yani, the return of Nabi Isa alayhi salam is the key to understand the entire subject. Hmm? It's going to be interesting tomorrow night at the University of Cape Town. Very interesting. Because I want to hear what the Christian have to say on the subject. Hmm? And the Christians pr present may probably be very interested to hear what the Muslims have to say on the subject. So tomorrow night is not going to be a debate to see who will win. Tomorrow night, we want to hear what you're saying. They want to hear what we are saying. The subject of the signs of the last day is therefore knowledge that is communicated directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say the last age because the key to the understanding of the whole subject is the return of the true Messiah. And Nabi Isa Islam told us that before the true Messiah can return, Allah will release into the world a false Messiah. al masih al He has to rule the world and he has to do it from Jerusalem. Because Nabi Isa alayhi salam, when he comes back, that's what he's going to do. So when you see him to rule the world from Jerusalem, he has to have a state of Israel to convince the Jews that he is indeed the Messiah. So when you see the Holy Land liberated by a British army, and then you see Britain taking control of the Holy Land, allowing the Jews to return. And then you see a state of Israel being born in the Holy Land. And then you see that Israel growing day by day to become more and more powerful. And then tomorrow you see that Israel take over from the United States as the ruling state of the world. You know that the time is close. 
when he will come forward, ruling the world from Jerusalem and declaring, I am the Messiah. It's so simple. So you know, you are living in the last age. And in the last age, knowledge is going to come from Allah. Directly. And that knowledge that comes directly communicates signs of the last day. Mm. And the signs of the last day cannot be understood using only the rational faculty. <laughs> you need a new methodology to handle the signs of the last day. And if you do not understand the signs of the last day, you will say all of these things are happening by accident. And when you go back home and you tell your wife that, she will say, well, a cow can also jump over the moon. I hope I'm not being too forceful. <laughs> I had a dream this morning. <laughs> and in the dream I saw that I had to catch a plane and I almost missed it. Just at the last moment I got in. So I understood that dream to mean that there is knowledge that I am teaching to the people and Allah is not impressed that I'm doing it sufficiently fast to find I'm too slow. Speed it up, Imran. Speed it up. Because they will miss the plane. They will miss the plane. You must speed up your teaching of this subject. This is my understanding of the dream. And so, the subject of dreams in Islam Take this to true dreams and true dreams and true visions have a status that you don't play games with. No, you don't put these aside and say I have more important things to deal with because this is the last part of prophethood remaining in the world. And if you show disrespect for any part of prophethood or Nabuwa, you pay the price for it. The signs of the last day are like the fat cow and the tin cow. How can the sun rise from the west? Hmm? Tell me. When the Quran itself tells you, that the sun rises from the east. Doesn't it? Did Ibrahim alayhi salam not have the argument with the king that the commentators of the Quran say is Namrud or Nimrod? Ibrahim alayhi salam is asking the king to worship his Islam. The king says, why? Give me one good reason. Give me one good reason, Ibrahim. And he says, it my God takes life. My God takes life. That's why you should worship my Lord. He said, but I also do that. <laughs> <laughs> I live life. I take life every day. Meaning, someone who is condemned to death. And he can forgive him. That's the explanation. He's given life. And someone who is in a or in death and take life. Then Ibrahim Alayhi Islam came, see his intelligence, he's still a boy. My God causes the sun to rise from the east. He didn't say, My God sometimes causes the sun to rise from the east. He didn't say that. He said, my God causes the sun to rise from the east. Why don't you cause it to rise from the west? 
And in the language of cricket, I mean, I don't want to have too much reference to cricket now because West Indies can be. He <laughs> <laughs> called it stumping. He was stumped. Yeah. Out. So the Quran declares that the sun rises from the east. And the Quran says something more. Allah's creation does not change. For the sun to rise from the west, it would imply that Allah's creation has changed, and therefore the Quran is false. As I know that there are many very, very clever and ingenious explanations that are given about the sun rising from the west. Hmm? I also bought one of them some time ago. Now, this is clearly religious symbolism. And in the same way that you have to interpret the seven fat cows and the seven thin cows, so do you have to interpret the sun rising from the west. When, however, you give an interpretation of religious symbolism, always remember, it is not binding. It is not binding on anyone. It is not a matter which affects your Akida. If someone does not accept it, he is not committed a sin. Not at all. When you give an interpretation of religious symbolism, not only is it not binding on anyone, but secondly, you have to be quick to say, Oh dear Allah does not make mistakes. Because you can be mistaken. But in making an effort to interpret religious symbolism, you are, you are engaged in an act that will bring reward. Bring reward. Even if you make a mistake, it can open the door for someone else to come who will give the correct interpretation. <coughs> In the Quran, Allah speaks twice, not once, twice, about knowledge which was communicated directly to someone with which that person was able to interpret religious symbolism in dreams, for example. In Surah to Yusuf, Allah said, فَعَلَوْهُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَرِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّكُكَ مِنْ تَحْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيِ إِلَى أَحْرِ الْآيَةِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicated to Yusuf alayhi salam the knowledge of the interpretation of the symbolism. And as a consequence, Yusuf alayhi salam was able to interpret the dreams. The king, the seven cows from the seven palestinian cows, the true prisoners, the two prisoners, the sun and the moon and eleven stars, etc. وَكَذَلِكَ يَشْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيمِ So there is a branch of knowledge that can be communicated to a servant of Allah with which he can interpret religious symbolism. Was Yusuf alayhi islam the only one? No! Nabi Muhammad alayhi islam islam one day had a surprise. A woman came to him and on her face he cried, Oh, messenger of Allah, I have seen something terrible! What did you see? Oh, messenger of Allah! I saw a piece of your flesh land in my gut. No. Oh, I to the world. <laughs> Something terrible. He started to smile. The woman was 
the wanted one. He's fighting. <laughs> He's fighting. He said, this dream of yours, this vision of yours, the true vision. Allah has communicated knowledge. But he has communicated that knowledge in the form of religious symbolism. And if anyone is making, and I'm not using these words sarcastically, do not accuse me of sarcasm, do not accuse me of disrespect, do not accuse me of arrogance because it is not sarcasm. It is not disrespect, it is not arrogance. I'm trying to teach you. If anyone is waiting for that lump of flesh of the Prophet of Islam, Islam to drop on her lap, you've got a long way ahead of you. He smiles. And if this means, if it might be, but it might be to make a baby. And you will hold the baby in your arms. <laughs> and that is what happened. That is what happened. Okay? And so the knowledge of the interpretation of dreams would be the knowledge of the interpretation of religious symbolism would be the knowledge with which to be able to interpret knowledge that comes directly from Allah. And that knowledge is not communicated to only one man. It's communicated to the Prophet as well. Al Islam. Is there any other place in the Quran with this kind of knowledge? If it is in the Quran, then we better wake up. Because we're living in the last days now. Unless we want to say that the cow can jump over the moon. <laughs> we're living in the last days now. We live in the age of the job. It's so little gap of the Quran. And we had a seminar on so little gap on Sunday all day long. And if you are with me on Sunday, don't go back home and say you understood so little gap now. <laughs> no. It might be better for you and I to say, maybe I have five percent now. I hope I can read six percent before I die. Eh? That would be better. Because the knowledge of the surah is inexhaustible. In surah al we have a warning of all warnings. That this is the only surah of the Quran linked to the jar. If you have no knowledge about the jar, don't start challenging me, please. Go we'll study the subject first before you make, your, uh, make an embarrassment of your own self. Go hmm? we'll study the subject first. In Surah Zulkan, we have the only Surah of the Quran which is linked to the Jah. Then the Prophet said, Alayhi Islam, recite the first ten ayat of Surah Zulkan for protection from the picking of the Jah. You know that. So this is the surah that is linked with the jar. But the jar has a PhD in detection. The fellow in Malaysia got angry. He got very angry with me. Because he just got his PhD. <laughs> <laughs> he worked very hard for that PhD. So he sent an email to me. Check! Don't do that again! <laughs> <laughs> he didn't believe me though. The child has a PhD in deception. The child comes in the river and the fire, he fires the river, he river the fire. <coughs> whoever falls in his river will have his load of things increased, whoever falls in his fire will have his load of things decreased, meaning <coughs> The road to heaven is made to look like the road to hell. The road to hell is made to look like the road to heaven. Meaning, appearance and reality are completely opposite to each other in all that pertains to the job. Meaning that if you go a judgment based on external observation alone, the appearance, the external form, 
all the things. We don't wish in the internal substance you will be deceived. You will be taken for a ride, the judgment will be wrong. And you will declare about modern Islamic, so called Islamic banking, for example, what you declare. And you declare about the modern monetary system of paper money, what you declare. But if you penetrate the substance of the subject, the internal substance, you will rec you recognize the truth of the matter. Hmm? And so in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah gave the lesson of all lessons. And how beautifully He gave it. The story of Musa, alayhi salam and khidr alayhi salam in my humble opinion is the most important passage in the whole Quran explaining the world today and equipping us to respond to it appropriately what is that story? Musa alayhi salam needs Khidr alayhi salam. He wants to study from him. He wants to learn from him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares about Khidr alayhi salam that he is the most learned of all men. He is the most learned of all men. What makes him the most learned of all men? Surah Al-Karantar وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّ عِلْمًا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّ عِلْمًا That I gave him knowledge directly from me, not knowledge that is acquired from the rational faculty. Not knowledge which is acquired through observation and experimentation. <coughs> knowledge that comes directly from Allah to Himself. That is what makes him the most learned of all men. And when Musa alayhi salam said, I want to meet that most learned of all men, what did Allah say? He said, take a fish. Don't ask me why, because I don't know. Might be somebody in this gallery who could teach me now. Why a fish? Put it in the basket. And travel to the place where Majma'ul Bahrain, where the two oceans meet. Where the two oceans meet. And there you meet. This is religious symbolism. Don't take me up to the top of Table Mountain and show me the two oceans. <laughs> Imam Baidawi, Rahimahullah, he is the one who said that the two oceans are the ocean of knowledge externally acquired and the ocean of knowledge internally acquired, Imam Baidawi. But when Imam Baidawi gives that interpretation, it is not binding on anyone. No. You don't have to accept it. And secondly, when Imam Bailawi gives an interpretation of this religious symbolism, Imam Bailawi has to protect himself only about him to make mistakes. Any one of us who gives an interpretation of religious symbolism has to accept that we can be wrong. But praise be to Allah that the Imam gave this interpretation. Because it is a clear daylight to me that it is the correct interpretation. Hmm? And when Musa Islam met Khidr alayhi salam, and then they traveled, there were three events that took place. The boat that was damaged, the boy who was killed, and the wall that was standing. On all three occasions, Musa alayhi salam, using knowledge, 
you did not able to acquire through observation and rational uh, analysis, on all three occasions Musa Islam came to a conclusion. And on all three occasions this conclusion was wrong. So if you have made a mistake about Islamic banking, or you've made a mistake about paper money, don't get angry. Don't be dispirited. Don't enter into a state of despair. Look, Musa Islam made mistakes. Hmm? On all three. And Khidr alayhi salam was correct. On all three. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that knowledge directly to him. So now, here we are. The subject of dreams allows us to now enter into the field of methodology for the acquisition of knowledge. That's how important it is. And the true dream or the true vision is the last part of prophethood remaining in the world today. So when the Prophet said that it's not for son, the Dajjal will ride on a donkey. The donkey will travel as fast as the clouds. The donkey will have his head stretched out wide. Which methodology are we to use to study and understand the hadith? Which one? It is located in the signs of the last day. As a consequence of which, we have to be careful that this could be religious symbols. There are two methodologies available. The first one insists on a literal interpretation, literal understanding. If the messenger of Allah said a donkey, then it will be a donkey. If he said the donkey will fly, then the donkey will fly. If he said the donkey will fly as fast as the cloud, then it will fly as fast as the cloud. And if he said that the air will be stretched out wide, then the air will be stretched out wide. Do not for one moment think that I am trying to humiliate anyone. I am not. This is one methodology. And this is a methodology which is insisting that it is the correct one for large numbers of Muslims around the world today. I don't need to mention any names. And then there's another methodology. It is not an exclusive methodology of the Sufis, not at all. Sheikh Safar al Hawari is a Saudi Sheikh. He is Salafi. He is not Sufi. Sheikh Safar al Hawari uses this methodology. Because when the Prophet said, Alayhi Salaam to Islam, that one of the signs of the last day will be the battle of the beast of the earth. I said to myself, out there, in this context, is Abdul Muqaddafa. And therefore, I am looking for a beast in the Holy Land. And when I go to the Holy Land to see a beast, I saw it immediately. There it is, the state of Israel. So I recognize this to be religious symbolism. And I interpreted the battle of to be the state of Israel. Imagine my surprise and my happiness to find a Saudi chef, a Salafi chef, doing the same thing. <laughs> yes. He wrote a book entitled Yawmul Khadam, The Day of Allah's Wrath. And in that book he interpreted that battle out to be the Zionist movement. Praise be to Allah! <coughs> Praise be to Allah! 
For a Saudi sheikh who has the courage to recognize that this is religious symbolism and to make an effort to interpret it, even if he is wrong, I pray that Allah has let him for the effort that he made. And so we on this side, we say that the donkey is religious symbolism. The donkey that travels as fast as the clouds and will have it there dressed, stretched on why we say it's the modern aircraft. Both sides should be allowed to express themselves. The doors of the market should be open. No side can speak to ridicule the other, but the people should be allowed to choose. And when the people make their choice, they will make the choice having studied the subject of their heart. Please them to. And so pay attention to your dreams. Before we end, Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar. He had a dream in which some angels came and held on to him, taking him to the hellfire. He must have woken up wet. And the book of the Hezbollah was down there about him. And he smiled. He smiled. Abdullah, this is a dream for you to make a greater effort. Make a greater effort. The last thing you do before you sleep, if you're not getting any dreams, or if the only dream that you have is about the US dollar collapsing, collapsing, collapsing. <laughs> before you sleep, make sure you sleep with the state of Mudu. Make a dua. Oh Allah, oh wait a minute, make sure you have your evening meal early, either before Maghrib or immediately after Maghrib, and make sure you don't eat a pound of food. The later you eat, and the more you eat, the more likely you that you get a visit from a gentleman named Shaitan. You get a nice meal. So have your dinner early, that's the sunnah. Don't overeat, eat a light meal, your last meal. Go to sleep as soon as possible after Salat Rishan. <laughs> An hour or so after Salat Rishan, the night time is So you get your deep sleep, you get your deep sleep before midnight. And after that you get your light sleep. And dreams don't come in deep sleep, they come in light sleep. But before you sleep, raise your hands, make dua, as Abdullah in the Umar was asked to do. O oh Allah, if you see any good in me, kindly give me a good dream. Good dream. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may bless you that you do our hands. Amen. Rabbana Tasalla minna inna ka 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 inna Thank you.
Christian alliance, about which we can give a warning. In Surah Al Ma'ida, verse number 49, you heard me repeating it so many times. So beware of the false sunrise. It's a sign of the last day, the ascendancy of the web is the falsehood. Secondly, the sunrise is associated with thee, not with man. And Allah says in the Quran that in the same way that He created the night and the day, so too did He create the male and the female. The sun rising from the west will represent therefore a reversal of the relationship between the day and the night. In other words, there's the night attempting to become day and the day attempting to become night. That is already happening in the world today with women assuming the function and role of men. The hadith is that women will dress like men. You will see them in a jacket, in trousers, sometimes at night. The blue jeans, the blue jeans of the woman and the man are the difference. Are the difference. She is dressing like a man, one of the reasons being she wants to assume the functional role of the man. As she dresses as a man, to assume the functional role of the man, number one, she loses femininity. Number two, she loses fertility. And uh, if you don't mind my mentioning, because it's mentioned in the context of knowledge, she also loses sexuality. The man would dress like a woman, said the Prophet of Islam. And if a man dresses like a woman, a bear will come in the way. <laughs> oh yes. So that helps us to explain why the Western world is taken off the bed. So that this prophecy can be fulfilled about men dressing like women. And so the sun rising from the West has this implication as well. The West, the tendency of the West is a false dawn, false sunrise, also. And it brings in its way an upside down world which is most dramatically recognized in the upside down relationship between the male and the female, the sun, the day and the night. Uh, the duha is smoke. Smoke. And there is a whole soul of the Quran, the Hadith of the Duha. And the Prophet of you can understand control the climate. Yeah. Then he can fall to the rain, he can fall, and fall to the rain, and fall. But he takes it with his hand, and all this from it. In three, Yeah, if you want, at the back of the hall, you'll find my books. In Surah Al-Kaf, text translation of modern property, you'll find my email address there. And also in the book that the gold be now in silver, the Urham Islam, and the future of money, you'll find my email address there. Please text me. <laughs> In the private paper email. Yes. Mulan and the school of thought of Rashid Reza and his Tafsir and Muhammad Abdul. They speak about what Rasala Ali in Paris and Adila. The comments are rational. Interpretation they refer to literacy. What does Mulan say about this? I do not have any knowledge about that one. Um, and I will certainly not dismiss the opinion of a man as learned as Sheikh Rashid 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 
and uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul. Although we have a problem with Sheikh Muhammad Abdul and his fatwa on on banking, on, on riba, riba. Uh, any other question? Yes. <coughs> Why do you want to so that I remember I can't hear properly, so... Yes, please, yeah. My question... Yes. This one. Yeah. No, it's just a question. Ah. The sisters want to hear. Okay. The sisters want to hear. Okay, all right. I'm not used to this. But, uh, first thing, I like you to keep this out. I spoke to you in uh, 2001 on the radio service. Yes, I could see. All right, all right. The service is this Okay. My question is, and this is this a vision of this vision of somebody. The sun rises from the west, right? in, the, in, the, in, the, in the end of the world, when the end comes. Don't you think that the sun has risen already in 1945, the atom bomb? Isn't that what was the sign and the whole world is fighting for it? Okay. Thank you very much. The question from our uh, and the brother is Mirai with me. Uh, is that uh, perhaps the sun has already risen from the west, and his interpretation of the sun rising from the west uh, is the atomic explosions of 1945. The atomic explosions of 1945, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, have come from the west as well. The use of nuclear weapons by the Western world is not by accident. By using nuclear weapons on two cities, they not only brought the war to an end quickly, but they established their dominance and their superiority over the rest of the world in a very dramatic way, which leads us to the conclusion that if Israel is to take over from the United States as the next ruling state in the world, Israel will not only have to wage a big war, we are expecting, but that Israel will also have to use weapons of mass destruction, like nuclear weapons. And so the use of atomic weapons was meant to cause the false sunrise, the false sunrise, to be accepted as a true sunrise. And that has happened in the minds of many, many people. Who wants to study the Quran anymore? I want to send my son to Harvard. I want to send my son to Yale. My son must get an American university education. I don't want my son to study Quran and Hadith. Ah, as for the people who have no money, no way to do anything else in the world. So that's when you study Quran and Hadith. So we are the authors of our own history. Yes. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Difference between the uh, inham and the in intuition and vision. Well, that's a difficult question for me. <laughs> <laughs> Too fine a line between them. Yeah. Ilham, the question is what's the difference between Ilham and Rukia? And uh, we ordinary people would find it almost impossible to answer a question like that. Because both Ilham and Ruya, Allah says, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا شُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا I inspired the soul. I inspired the soul with its capacity for 
भगवत सही हो भगवत जीवन सही हो एक मोड ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन थ्रू विच समथिंग इज ट्रांसमिटेड एंड इट डिज नॉट इन्वॉल्व द यूज ऑफ द रैशनल फैकल्टी इट डिज नॉट इन्वॉल्व द यूज ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन राधा इट इज डिरेक्टली ट्रांसमिटेड फ्रॉम अ वॉ to whom so ever it is transmitted to so there is a similarity between gilha and rupya but how to distinguish between the two is beyond me any other question no 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 yes is the rohiya connected with ilmul ladun yes it is wa'allamnahu min ladunna ilma says the quran about whom about khidr alayhi salam wa'allamnahu min ladunna ilma it is simple what the quran is telling us is that knowledge can be transmitted through a medium of a man the use of the rational faculty and external observation and experimentation what the quran is saying is that knowledge can also be transmitted directly and the methodology of transmission is a course of the mind the heart can see the heart can hear the heart can understand and allah says that if you have eyes and yet do not see don't be angry with me for quoting the verse of the quran please this is not our speaking how can you be angry with him if you have eyes and yet do not see if you have ears and yet do not hear If you have parts of the earth you do not understand, Uda is a Milanam. Which is like Kepo. Why? Do you remember that PhD from MIT? Yes. Even with a PhD from MIT, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Huh? If you have eyes and yet do not see, you just like Kepo. Say the Lord, but who are all? But oh, Adal, rather you Western, you more this kind than Adal. So you have to have a heart which has faith in it. The heart will not have faith in it if the lips declare Allah who I am. But the heart is there. The South African ran the time bar. That's not faith. If the lips declare everything for Allah, but the heart declares not my U.S. visa, that I can't do. Huh? It must end with the heart. The heart must have faith. And when your heart is for Allah, even if you commit sins, and you all commit sins, you raise your hands and ask for forgiveness. You make tawbah, you ask for forgiveness. But your heart is for Allah. Then, when the heart is for Allah, <laughs> then will come the stage where. The heart space comes in the heart, 
the methodology of Noor. And in that philosophy there is a lamp. The lamp has a glass. The glass has to be cleaned, that's the end. And the lamp must have oil. You've got to work, you've got to sacrifice, you've got to show that you're struggling for the triumph of truth. Hmm? And then the noor will come. Noor na'ala noor, the noor will come. Every time you perform salah, every time you perform salah, and you recite Surah al I told you this earlier, the seventh ayah and the seventh tanawat. So when you reach the seventh tanawat, me, you are at the arsh, waiting for no, waiting for no, in every salah. And this is what the Prophet said in his last Islam. He said, as salat noor. As salat noor. Salat noor. And so, when noor comes, you'll be able to see what they cannot see of their worship them. Any other question? Yes, you know. Some leaves, some boiling, some people leaves, some boiling leaves, some leaves, some leaves, the one who leaves, the other leaves, you see, they have more close connection of French or a lot of connection. The man that pointed out that some leaves come clean and clear, exactly what I think. And some trees do not come like that. This is more Kamal, this is more the Shadiha. The Quran is like that. Some verses in the Quran play and play, some of the verses in the Quran code it. Code it. And for the code it verses, you're not going to be able to understand them. Until you can penetrate the inside. One of the examples would be most famous example in fact would be a proper Kashyapiha. If you don't take the Jews and Christians as your friends and allies, they are friends and allies of each other. And whosoever turns to them with friendship and alliance becomes is one of them. And Allah will not provide guidance for people who commit good. If you look at all the capacities of the Quran, all of them, this is what you find. The world had to unfold. Fourteen hundred years had to pass. The sun had to rise from the west. Before we could understand. No, this is not what Allah is saying. No. Allah is not saying don't take all Jews and all Christians as friends and allies. No. That's wrong. He's talking about some Jews and some Christians. Which ones? We couldn't understand. Couldn't understand. Until now, for the first time, don't take such Jews and such Christians as your friends and allies, who themselves are friends and allies of each other. Meaning, a Jewish Christian friendship and alliance is going to emerge in history. It's going to come. And when it comes, do not take those people as your friends and allies. And if you do that, you're going to lose your Islam. You're going to lose your Islam. This is what I'm talking about. So there are verses of the Quran which are put share like this one, and verses which are Mokkama. And there are trees which are like Mokkama, and trees which are like Mokkama, and trees which are like Both of them can be true. Both of them can come from Allah. Like, لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رُكِيَ اللَّهُ رُكِيَ اللَّهُ رُكِيَ اللَّهُ رُكِيَ اللَّهُ رُكِيَ اللَّهُ رُكِيَ اللَّهُ This ayah of the Quran of the Surah Al-Fatih is plain there. It says what is going to happen. Not to the Shabiha. Let's be. And it is Rukiya. They both come from Allah. 
there's no indication that this one is superior to that one or that one is superior to this one. Mashallah, I want to welcome my dear student, Mahana Ridwan Matthews. <laughs> First time I'm seeing him tonight. My dear, very dear student, I taught him at the Alimi Institute of Islamic Studies and now he's Mahana Ridwan here. Welcome, Ridwan. Yes, both. Both the Mutashadihat and the Mutkamata of the Mawa. There is no superiority in one over the other. Both are important. You must not neglect the Mutashadihat in the last age of the time that Allah has unfolded. Any more questions? Otherwise, we will go and have a talk on Salah Jaya now. Yes, good one. Good question. This has to be a collective effort on the part of the whole Jamaat. All of us will now become examiners. Any time an opinion is expressed, any time an interpretation is offered, every single member of the Jamaat will now become an examiner. Okay? To test this interpretation. Test it. If it is the truth, it will survive. If not, it will back up very soon. You know a tree by the fruit it produces. If your interpretation bears fruit, <laughs> like if Israel does replace the United States, as a ruling state in the world, hmm? then your tree is bearing fruit. Your theory is being validated. <laughs> if paper money disappears and a new money comes which is electronic money, I wish I knew more about it, I don't. And the new money functions like a financial Guantanamo. That if you refuse a bank account, can you be refused a bank account? Oh yes. Once you refuse a bank account in a world of electronic money, you can't buy anything. You can't sell anything. <laughs> you are out of the market. Would you allow your enemies to achieve that? Hmm? So as these things happen, as events unfold, you will know whether the tree is getting fruit or not. This is the pragmatic test of whether or not your interpretation of religious symbolism is true or false. Any other questions? ربنا تقبل منا إنك تسميع عليك وتبع علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب اللهم أنت السلام وإنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعالى يا جلال يا رفاق اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو وعنا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب النار ونعوذ بك من فتنة المحيا والمنا ومن فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد بارك الله فيك يا رب